Hi, everybody. My name is Allie. And my opponent claimed in her uh, in the fact speech that maintaining the legal drinking age of 21 saves a substantial number of lives related specifically to drunk driving. My opponent's claims were that the majority of natural deaths are caused by car accidents um, and that there has been a decrease in alcohol-related accidents since the legal drinking age went up to 21 in 1984. She also goes on to say that the majority of car accidents are alcohol-related and that most accidents are caused by people that are aged 15 to 29. However, it's my claim that these two, ins uh, these two issues don't actually relate the issue of the legal drinking age being 21 and that people die from drunk driving. Uh, these, the claims of my opponent are um, backed up by evidence that was actually unrelated, taken out of context, and insufficient. These uh, instances of evidence actually, this, these pieces of evidence actually support the counter that these two topics are actually unrelated. So the first uh, piece of evidence that my opponent gave was that uh, drunken drivers under 21 cause accidents. This was taken from a study done in 2010. And while it does confirm that um, young people ages 15 to 29 year olds cause 42% of the accidents, in the entire study alcohol is never mentioned or even considered. Furthermore, the drinking age as of 2010 was not under 21, so it's completely irrelevant. The second um, piece of evidence is taken out of context. The claim is that the drop in deaths related to alcohol is due to the law that raised the drinking age from 18 to 21. This was taken from an article in the National Review. It's a little bit complicated, so I'll slow it a bit down. John Miller wrote the article reviewing a book called Choose Responsibility for McArdle. This citation that my opponent used is a citation of McArdle. Uh, my opponent said alcohol-related drinking uh, fatalities have fallen sharply since 1982. This is um, quoted from McArdle in this article. Uh, President Presidential Commission on Drunk Driving urged states to raise the drinking ages to 21. That year, there were 1.64 deaths per 100 million vehicle um, vehicle miles of travel, but in 2001, there are only 0.63 deaths, and that's a drop of 62%. While this sounds like it supports the claim, directly after that, the article and the citation continues to say, this is an important achievement, yet the drinking age has probably played only a small role. The dramatic increase in seatbelt use almost certainly accounts for the most improvement. And that is referring to the fact that the seatbelt law was implemented the exact same year that the drinking the last bit of evidence um, came from Mothers Against Dr Drunk Driving and that they supported the idea that the drinking age should be at 21. However, this article actually has nothing to do with um, the drinking age at all. It simply um, retells Mad's history and supports that we have to stop um, illegal drinking. So from the evidence that my opponent used, the evidence actually hurts her claim because it's unrelated, taken out of context, insufficient, and does not suggest a relationship between drunk driving and the drinking age. Thank you.
All right. Uh, the advocate structure is laid out clearly. Uh, I thought you had a good preview of your general approaches to what was going on, that the evidence is unrelated, it lacks context, and it's insufficient to prove this particular point. So those are basically going to be responses on those individual points. On the uh, first point uh, where you challenged the evidence, I thought that there was a, a pretty good argument here that says that the accountability for the accidents never mentions um, drunk driving in that particular situation. I thought that, you know, that's it. That's an important part. You know, the fact that uh, a particular group accounts for a large number of accidents doesn't necessarily mean that those accidents are caused by uh, alcohol consumption. And if the article never says that they are, then it sounds like something has in fact been taken out of context and it's being used to make an inference that's invalid. Um, the argument about uh, the... Um, the death rate going down. I thought the statistical explanation was a good reminder of what the advocates' evidence said, but the follow-up is a good example of a counterclaim that comes because you did the research on the evidence and discovered that uh, the advocates themselves suggested that there may only be a small portion of that that is attributable to the uh, change in the alcohol laws because there's also uh, a change in the seatbelt law at the same time and that's likely to have accounted for a substantial difference in the uh, number of deaths for instance. Uh, this might be answered by a point that has nothing to do with the deaths, but rather the number of accidents. That would probably be the follow-up that would come from the Gesundheit, uh, from the other side, if we were having this in a debate. Um, the argument about MAD and all of that not being relevant to the claim that's being presented, I thought you explained that pretty well. It's basically, you've, you've structured your response around the evidence that the advocate used, challenging the legitimacy of the evidence and the way it's being used, not making any particular count counterclaims per se, but uh, just kind of generally pressing on those things. And I thought that you did a pretty good job on a couple of those points, finding some flaws in the argument, especially on the second point, finding uh, a caveat or a reservation here with a potential counter cause for the uh, decline in deaths. I thought that was probably the most effective part of your argument. All right. Thank you.